Dive in. Get wet. Discover a blue universe. Watery worlds filled with life. From the graceful to the gawky. From the combative to the curious. From the timid to the titanic. Join us on an ocean odyssey. Commissioned by the Smithsonian to create a film and exhibit for the National Museum of Natural History's Ocean Hall in Washington, D.C., filmmaker and ocean conservationist Feodor Pitcairn set out to capture the places, creatures, and great events that make the ocean a magical place for him. Joined by longtime friend and cameraman Bob Cranston, they set out on their own odyssey to shoot the underwater world they know and love so well. First step in their ocean odyssey, visiting some of their favorite places. We very carefully selected these really wonderful spots that are still in pristine condition. We wanted to have a combination of locations that would illustrate the enormous variety of ecosystems that actually exist in the ocean. It's the variety of intact ecosystems that really make the ocean so fascinating. Theo, we're the cowboys that got to go across the plain and see the buffalo, because there are still big black sea bass out there, and there are still big sharks, and these habitats are getting a lot of pressure put on them, and I'm concerned. I feel very lucky that I get to see these things and film them. What could be better? What could be better? Galapagos, an ancient archipelago rising out of the sea, forming a series of island worlds, creating a place of otherworldly magic. rich with species found nowhere else, adapted to living here and only here at this remote Pacific outpost. Galapagos has long been a favorite destination for Feo Pitcairn, and he has traveled there more than 19 times to explore the islands and their unique marine life. When you think about Galapagos, you start to understand why this place is so special. First thing is that it's right on a rift, so the volcanic archipelago has risen from the seafloor, just in the right spot where it intersects with a whole bunch of different currents. The cold water currents sweeping up from South America, the warm El Nino current, which flows down into Galapagos at Christmas time, and the Cromwell Current, which is a deep water current that upwells on the western end of Galapagos. So all of these currents are intersecting right at this hot spot where new islands are being born. And you have this ocean light from the cold water environment, from the warm water environment. So the evolution that occurred with ocean life there has produced a very high percentage of endemic marine life. Millions of years ago, iguanas arrived here in the Galapagos, likely drifting in on rafts of floating vegetation. Like so many of the others who now call Galapagos home, once they arrived, they adapted specifically for life in this unique environment. The marine iguanas of Galapagos are the only lizards that eat underwater. And while the cold water is rich with food and provides the iguanas with a feast of algae, it also poses a risk. They must carefully time their dives. They are cold-blooded animals, stay too long in the water, and risk a deadly drop in body temperature that could leave them unable to swim safely back to shore. Hammerhead 
large sharks arrive here seasonally, whether to feed or mate, or simply as a resting place along their migratory route, we aren't entirely certain. They arrive in Galapagos in smaller groups, but once the full aggregation is in place, they are a force to be reckoned with. Their sheer numbers contribute to their fierce beauty. During the day, they school together in groups of intimidating size, dispersing at night to hunt alone. My favorite Galapagos experience was that diving that we did at Darwin Island, where we would see these groups of hammerhead sharks coming up out of the depths, oh, 10 or 20 of them at a time. But something told me that there were more of them if we would just go over that edge and go down and look. I jumped in the water and swam over the edge and I followed some hammerhead sharks down to about 160, 180 feet and waited. And sure enough, there comes a school of maybe three or 400 hammerhead sharks and they came right up the gully and right over the top of my head. And I was screaming to myself down there, ah, this is it, this is why we're doing this. It was wonderful. Another special place that both Bob and Fayo love are the kelp forests of the Channel Islands off the coast of California. Bob grew up and learned to dive here, and Fayo has been here more times than he can recall. What I love about the kelp forest is its three-dimensional qualities. It goes from bottom all the way to top, and it creates a habitat for animals, not just on the bottom, but throughout the whole water column, which makes for a lot of fun shooting. When I was a kid, nine years old, started diving with my father. There were these big black sea bass out there in the kelp forest, and we used to see them. And they disappeared. They were taken out by inshore nets, mostly. Spear fishermen, fishermen, so on. But they were protected. 